The Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease Journey, Part 1 Of all the memories I have about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, two stand out most clearly. The day I discovered I had it. The day my doctor confirmed, it was completely gone. I have to admit, the journey between having NAFLD and no longer having NAFLD, wasn't an overnight one. And, a couple of times, I was worried sick about what the condition might turn into. Because as I quickly learnt, it often doesn't just remain as it is. If you don't address it quickly, it can lead to far worse, and potentially deadly, conditions. But there is a way to reliably deal with NAFLD. When I eventually found out about it, well, that made all the difference, not only to my liver health, but also to everything else. Now my liver is fat free, and it's going to stay that way. Although when I first went to my doctor I didn't realize this at all. The shock of discovery. I'd gone to her complaining of feeling tired and fatigued. I thought anemia, or something similar might be the cause for my tiredness. The truth turned out to be considerably more concerning. My doctor told me she suspected I had fatty liver disease. I was sent for tests and, a long story cut short, the ultrasound confirmed it. I had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And everything that was likely to go with it. I'd gone to the doctor feeling tired. I came out with a serious disease. However, the bad news kept coming. Just how bad is NAFLD? It's this bad. Your liver is one of the body's unsung heroes. The work it does is essential to our very existence. It transforms food into usable nutrients, stores these nutrients, and provides them to cells as and when they're needed. It also neutralizes toxins toxins is a medical term for poisons either by converting them into harmless substances, or by making sure they are eliminated directly from the body. 24 hours a day our liver takes in unclean blood, filters it, refreshes it and then releases clean blood back into your body. We never think about our liver. Thankfully, our liver is always thinking about us. But if it suddenly can't clean your blood properly, then what? You can't go to the supermarket for some fresh stuff. If our livers are struggling to do what they are there to do, then those toxins start to build up. So if you suffer from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, you have my deepest sympathy. Because that's exactly what is happening to you. It's what I went through too, a liver becoming steadily more fatty. Its ability to keep me healthy becoming steadily more difficult. Fatty liver doesn't just get better on its own. Much more worryingly, if we don't address it there's every chance that it just carries on getting worse. And when I say it gets worse I mean it gets really, seriously worse, you know what I'm referring to, don't you? So how much worse can it get then? Well, if you haven't seen this before, then perhaps first you ought to be sitting down. There are four recognized stages that your fatty liver can move through. Simple fatty liver. A buildup of excess fat in the liver that, initially, can be relatively harmless, but only if it stays like this. But if you don't address the problem, it has little reason to stay harmless. Non-alcoholic statohepatitis, NASH. A more serious form of fatty liver, where there is inflammation in the liver. This is caused by not properly addressing your fatty liver, when it first started being fatty. Fibrosis. The persistent inflammation at the NASH stage, leads to scarring of the liver tissue. Cirrhosis. Ongoing scarring of the liver has caused it to shrink and become lumpy. The damage is permanent, irreversible, and can will lead to liver failure and liver cancer. So the insight here is clear, and it hit me like a lead weight. I don't actually have some static, unchanging condition called fatty liver disease. What's really happening is that, as a sufferer of fatty liver you're moving through this disease, slowly transitioning from one stage, to a worse one. In other words, the disease we've currently got is only today's snapshot, of a process that's underway in our bodies. It's the disease we could end up with that's the real cause for alarm. And this isn't an exaggeration. Liver disease is taking an increasingly worsening toll on our society. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the number of deaths caused by liver disease, and cirrhosis has risen every year since 2007. Worse. Fatty liver is associated with an increased risk of other serious health problems, including kidney disease, high blood pressure and diabetes. 
So I suddenly found myself with a disease, that is now among the top 15 causes of deaths for Americans. When I first saw all this I panicked a bit. I felt this was starting to look like some sort of death sentence. Like I was on a conveyor belt being carried to a horrible future. Then I calmed down. I took some deep breaths and engaged my brain. I knew what I was going to do. I was going to find out which were the most effective meds, and then speak to my doctor about them. I would examine my options for treatments, in case my fatty liver became even fattier. And I'd see who the best surgeons were if, goodness forbid, things went really bad and, perhaps, I'd need surgery to trim off the fat. All good plans, I thought. I thought wrong. Because. Stay tuned for the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease journey, part 2.